Hello and welcome to our service here at Church of the Atonement in Tenafly for the third Sunday of Easter. I'm delighted to be back in the church today filming with Alan Lauderdale, our Eucharistic minister and on the flute, and also Brian Schober, uh, our music director on the organ. And you can enjoy the pr wonderful prelude and postlude by Brian on, on separate videos, and I hope that you enjoy them. I know that you will. Our service uh, today is from the Ministry of the Word, uh, the Word of God, the first part of the service of Holy Eucharist Rite Two, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. If you have a prayer book, you can turn to page 355. If not, we'll guide you through the service. Just to let you know, when we get to the gospel, we're going to be singing a simple Tze Alleluia, and the only word in it is Alleluia. So you're welcome wherever you are to sing along with us as we go and uh, to receive the gospel and to hear the gospel read. We begin the service with a hymn because it is Easter, and how could we not uh, begin this celebration with a hymn? And this is also Easter Earth Day Sunday because back on Wednesday it was the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and every year at Atonement, we celebrate a Sunday close to that day as Easter Earth Day. So the perfect hymn for this day is Welcome Happy Morning, uh, with words by Arthur Seymour Sullivan. Um, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn 179. Hymn 179, Welcome Happy Morning. to that second verse are, Earth her joyous joy confesses, clothing her for spring. All fresh gifts returned with her returning king. Bloom in every meadow, leave on every bough. Speak his sorrow ended, hail his triumph now. Welcome happy morning, age to age shall say. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some woman of our group astounded us, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon Peter. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I reflected on the Gospel this uh, the past few days, I couldn't help but remember a painting, it was really a print of a painting, uh, that hung in my grandparents' home uh, the whole time that I knew them. First in an apartment in Jersey City when I was growing up there the first couple years, few years of my life, then when my parents would bring me down to visit, and then later when they retired to an apartment in Bradley Beach, uh, it was always had the pride of place over the sofa. They didn't have many original works of art, but this was a print. I found out many years later with my interest in art that it was a print of a painting by Robert Zund, who was a well-known Swiss landscape painter from the late 19th and very early 20th century. He was not influenced by the Impressionists, but he was a, just a very meticulous and, and extremely skillful painter of landscapes. And I enjoyed looking at some of them online uh, uh, today, this morning and yesterday, beautiful landscapes. As he got older, some of his uh, paintings became religious, and his most famous painting is called uh, The Way to Emmaus, a gong is it in German, the gong a, uh, Emmaus. And it, that was the painting that my, parent, my grandparents had a print of in their home. And it was this beautiful landscape uh, with a road in the front, sort of path with beautiful trees overhanging with green leaves. And, and then uh, slightly at a distance, there was a sort of valley with a river going through it. And then the branches of the trees framed a beautiful sky. Uh, you know how much I love uh, sky, beautiful skies. Uh, and I thought about that this morning as we celebrate uh, also Earth Day, and uh, we know that right now the sky is clearer now than it has been in, in decades because of the, the reduction of traffic during this public health crisis, uh, and we're, we're breathing fresher air right now than we have some of us in our lifetimes, especially here in Bergen County. So go out for a walk and breathe in that air and look at the sky. Uh, it's a special time, even though we're going through a very difficult and painful time for many. Uh, this is one of the things that we can, on Earth Day, remember. And so I was remember this painting, and of course the foreground was uh, Jesus and the two disciples walking um, and Jesus is sort of gesturing to them and they're listening to him uh, and I know why that fascinated me as a child and one of the nice things about religious pe painting some people poo-poo <laughs> religious art uh, but the really good religious art it sort of invites us in that's the whole point it's sort of devotional and it, it invites us in to imagine ourselves in that place uh, in that place with Jesus or with Mary at the tomb. And the beauty, of, the beauty of our stained glass windows to some degree is this as well. And when I was recording the uh, prelude earlier, uh, uh, Brian playing the prelude, I focused over here uh, on, we have two Easter windows on either side of our high altar. And the one on this side are the disciples at dinner with Jesus uh, in Emmaus. And on this side we have Mary Magdalene at the tomb. So we're surrounded by witnesses to the resurrection. And we can sort of imagine when we're sitting, when we're kneeling, uh, we can't receive communion now. We haven't been able to receive communion since March 8th, but when we receive communion, we're surrounded by these reminders. Uh, it says, if we are there with the disciples, those two disciples in Emmaus, and we have just had this walk uh, with Jesus, but we didn't recognize him. But now, we do. This walking with Jesus was something I imagined, at, both as a child and as I grew older, by looking at that painting in my grandparents' apartment. It's also, each time we hear this gospel, it's a reminder that wherever we are, out on the road, at home, in church, uh, at work, that Jesus comes alongside us and walks with us. And that in most cases, like those two disciples, we don't recognize him. We're not sure where Jesus is. We know we celebrate his resurrection, we believe that he is alive, and yet we go through so much of our lives uh, not recognizing him in the moment when he is indeed with us always. 
I would have liked to be there, of course, with Jesus and those two disciples. I would have liked to hear him uh, explain the whole scriptures from Moses, the greatest prophet, through how the scriptures testified uh, to Jesus as the Messiah. What a great Bible study uh, that must have been, or a great sermon that we don't get to hear the whole of. Um, and later on, the uh, disciples say, did not our hearts burn within us when he was explaining the scriptures to us? And one of the places where we come close to Jesus, close to recognizing him, is when we do read and meditate on the scriptures um, that point to him, that point to the love of God for all of us, the love that we see incarnate, that we see revealed uh, in Jesus. And of course, the other reason why that painting was so magnificent to me, and I loved art from the time I was very young, was the whole surrounding of the creation. Uh, the, the people were in proportion. They were relatively small. They were very visible, but they were in the foreground. But they were almost not quite sort of overpowered by the, the gorgeous trees. You know, the landscape painters and, you know, just reveled in the beauty of the creation around them. And it reminded me also of uh, the Christian understanding that there are different types of revelation. There is uh, general revelation, uh, the, 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 the book of creation, that what we learn of God from the beauty and wonder and power of creation. And then special revelation or the book of uh, scriptures or the book of the word and the church uh, where we hear a more specific revelation of uh, both of these are so important for our experience of God's love God's power God's provision now in these difficult times uh, as we uh, struggle with a response to the coronavirus some struggling much more mightily than we are some of us those who have become very ill, those who are grieving over uh, those people who have died of the virus, uh, our doctors and nurses who are just courageously every day confronting the virus uh, in the hospitals and the healthcare centers, all of the people who are on the front lines, the law enforcement and other uh, f first responders, these folks are out there some of us are out there too, uh, struggling and working. Others, uh, most of the time, are at home, uh, anxious, worried about our loved ones. And into this difficult space, uh, whether we're sitting still or walking along, Jesus comes alongside us and tries, Jesus is very best, <laughs> to reveal himself to us to reveal that he has indeed conquered death, conquered sin and suffering and pain. We still experience in them, but we know that they are not the end. We know that God's power and God's love, just as God's brought Jesus from the dead, brings each of us through even our uh, daily struggles as well as our ultimate uh, struggles. So on this Easter Earth Day Sunday, we celebrate the, the beautiful revelation of God's power and presence in creation and also the amazing and much more specific revelation of God in Christ, raising Christ from the dead and offering us new life now in this life and new life in the life to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we are going to use Form 4, which is found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. In this form of prayer, the affirmations of the congregation will come in response to my saying, Lord, in your mercy, and the response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth 
live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. We remember all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, in all the different churches and denominations, and all of our brothers and sisters of every religion and no religion, as we gather together as one world confronted with the challenge of the coronavirus and care for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our President Donald, for members of the Congress and courts, and for all of our first responders, especially the police, firefighters, and uh, EMTs, and all other people on the front lines of this public health crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray that on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day, that we would recommit ourselves to caring for God's creation given into our stewardship, and that uh, this recognition that all that we do affects the world around us and affects our fellow human beings will change, help us to change our ways to protect Earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We remember especially those celebrating birthdays in the week to come. Andrew McKesh, Dean Weber, and Mabel Allen. And we give thanks for all of the caregivers uh, who are in the hospitals and other places caring for those who are ill. We give thanks for their lives and their dedication. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember especially Christopher, Art Ritter, Chris Quirk, and the other police officers in Englewood, Sarah, Laura, and Delora, Victoriana and Tania, Patty Lynn, Sylvia Grompone, Stephen, Mary Ann, Wendy Fisher, Suzanne Costin Braun, Martin Gold, Danielle Campos, Sean Duffy, Lorraine Mace, Mary Lou Perhox. We also remember differently abled children and their families, therapists and teachers, and for all teachers and those who care for children uh, virtually now rather than in person. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We remember this day, Dom, Odilla Bria, Zoanne, Verda Thompson LeClaire, Bradley Box, and Luke Smith and others who we bring to our mind and hearts with just a moment of silence, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 I invite you now to join us in the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As our closing song, we have um, a simple Taze chorus. And the words, it's called just Jesus the Lord is Risen. And the words are these. Jesus the Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Alleluia. Brian will play it through once for us, and then we'll just repeat that three times. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. It's been a privilege to worship with Brian and Alan this morning and with all of you by way of this video. And we pray that you would continue to feel the presence of the risen Christ in this Easter season and throughout the year. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>